Okay, I'm going to go through um, how we would calculate the center of mass for a like a half disc. So we, in class we talked about this as like a hockey puck, but we're just seeing half of it, right? So, or we just have half of it, it's cut in half. <clears throat> so it looks like this. Uh, okay. So this is my x-axis here, my y-axis here. Um, and so I want to know what my uh, center of mass is. So um, in the x-direction, we can just argue based on symmetry that there's as much mass on the left side over here as there is over here. And so the x-center of mass is equal to zero. Um, we could calculate that as well, but for now, we'll just go ahead and uh, use that symmetry argument. So now I want to find the y-center of mass. And so recall that the equation for center of mass is um, the integral of each mass element times its y position. And then I'm going to divide by the integral of all the mass elements, right? And this is really just what we're talking about is total mass here. OK, so let's visualize how we might chop this up into little pieces um, and think about how we could do an integration. OK, so I'm going to think about um, cutting this up into basically all these concentric rings. So it might look one like that. And maybe there's like a little, so that's like one ring, right? Um, and in polar coordinates, this would be at a radius r, and this would be at a radius r plus dr. Okay, so the width of my ring in that direction is just dr. Right, so it's r plus dr minus r. Um, okay, and then for um, in the z direction, right, if we looked at that, um, we would try and make another view of that. If we had, uh, so that would still be our y direction, and z would be in that direction, and our disk. Would look like this, right? So it's just it's uniform mass distribution. It just is going to have some thickness that we'll call t. Okay. So my volume element in the z direction is just dz. Okay. So we're trying to figure out now what our volume element is, and if we know that, then we can multiply that by the density. So we said in this case, it's uniform density. So for three dimensional objects, usually we use the symbol rho. Okay, and so once we know what dv, the volume element is, then our mass element is just rho times dv. Okay, so so we have one part of our volume element is dr, one is dz, and now we have to just think about what that little piece is um, that's in the theta direction, actually. So let's just zoom in on what that looks like. Not the best choice there of color for axes. So here's my disk, right? Oops. And then I'll draw on one little ring that I'm going to try and use as my example for integrating, right? And now I'm going to be cutting it up into all these little pieces that are just kind of like a radial slice, okay? So I need to know what is the dimension in that direction. So if you remember just from the arc length formula, right? So, so basically this is theta and that's theta plus d theta. Okay, so my difference there is just this little wedge is d theta. So remember from the arc length formula that the arc length is r theta. In this case, we just have d theta. So my arc length along uh, this direction, right, ds is my radius times d theta. So now I have all the pieces for my volume element. So my volume element is um, r d theta, and that's the one we just figured out, times dr times dz. Okay, so now we are ready to actually calculate uh, the center of mass. So let's just look at the 
top integral. So if we go back up here, I'm going to focus first on this part, right? Getting the top part of the integral. And it turns out actually in, in this situation, it's actually a triple integral because we're going to integrate over all three um, dimensions here. So it's a triple integral of dm times y. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the last thing we have to do is talk about what the y coordinate is of a particular mass element, right? So if I'm talking about this little mass element, what's its y coordinate? Um, so in polar coordinates, right, we'd have r, we'd have theta, and the y dimension is r sine theta. Okay, so we're going to plug that in here for y. <clears throat> okay, so let's rewrite that now. So we have our triple integral. My mass element is rho times the volume element. And now my y position, I know up here, right, is r sine theta. Okay, and now we're going to plug in what we just came up with for the volume element in polar uh, cylindrical coordinates. So we have our triple interval. So we're going to do d theta dr and dz. Density, which is just constant in this example. <clears throat> and then my volume element is r d theta dr dz. And then I have still my y coordinate, which is r sine theta. Okay. <clears throat> Um, okay, so now let's look at the, the um, starting and ending points of these different uh, integrations. So we can write this again as, um, so well, let's think about in, in two directions, it's pretty straightforward, right? So in the z direction, we're going to start at zero and we're going to integrate out to the thickness t. In the radial direction, we're going to start at zero again and we're going to keep slicing this up into more and more rings and get all the way out to this radius r, right, which is the edge of the disk. So my radial direction goes from 0 to r. And then when I think about any particular ring, I'm going to be slicing this up, right, so this would be at theta of 0. I'm going to slice it up into little pieces and add them up. That's what the integration is doing, right? And I'm going to have to go from theta of 0 all the way over to theta of pi. So now I kind of like to just attach these um, differentials to an actual integral so we can set up the limits. <clears throat> okay, and remember rho is a constant, so I can take that outside of the integral. Okay, so dz, we said we're going to integrate from 0 to t. dr, we will integrate from 0 to r. d theta, we're going to integrate from 0 to pi. Okay, and then what we're left with is r sine theta, and then uh, we have another r there, actually, right? So it's r squared sine theta. Okay, so let's integrate um, first with respect to R. So maybe I maybe I'll just swap these just to <clears throat> so we do it in the order we want. We'll start with the leftmost. Uh, so this is d theta from zero to pi, and then dr from zero to r. Okay. So if I integrate with respect to r, sine theta is just basically we treat it as a constant, right? So this integral will become r cubed. We have a one third power, and we're going to evaluate it from zero to r. Um, and then on the left, so let's just bracket, that's evaluating the dr integral. So this is zero to pi of um, d theta sine theta. And then we have zero to t of dz. And we still have our density out in front. Okay, so if we do our evaluation between the limits of the integral, we get um, one third r cubed minus one third times zero. So that goes away. Okay, so now these are constants. I'm going to just move them to the left out of uh, my integration. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to write uh, one third row 
r cubed. And then I have my integral in the z direction from 0 to t, and my integral in the theta direction from 0 to pi of sine theta and t theta. And now I can integrate the theta part. Right? So we just do one dimension at a time. <coughs> Sorry, this is COVID for you. OK, so the integral of sine theta is negative cosine. Right, because if I took the derivative of cosine, I get negative sine, so I get negative cosine theta evaluated between zero and pi. Okay, and then I always just sketch out what my cosine graph looks like. So cosine starts as one, goes down to zero, goes to negative one, back up, and back up to one. Okay, and these important points are uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Okay, so then cosine of pi is negative 1, so let's just write that again down here. So we have negative, and then I'm just going to evaluate the definite interval, so cosine of pi minus cosine of 0. <clears throat> Okay, so this is negative 1 minus 1, so I get negative 2, and then I still have a negative 1 out here. So then my integral of theta is going to give me a factor of 2. So all that just simplifies to 2. So let's bring that now back out in front of my integral. So I get 2 thirds rho r cubed. And I'm still left with my integral from 0 to z of dz. So that part is fairly straightforward. The integral of dz is just z. I'm going to evaluate it between, oops, sorry, that should be t. No, z. So remember, t is the thickness in the z direction. So 0 to t, um, again, that's going to be t minus 0, so I just get a t up there. <clears throat> okay, so that is the integral of dm times y. Okay, let's put that there. Okay. So, what is the density? How would we represent that? So, the density, if in this case, it's uniform. If it's not uniform, right, we couldn't have just pulled that out as a constant. So, you'd have to keep that in when you're doing all the integration. <clears throat> um, but the density in this case is going to be the mass divided by volume. And so that's mass divided by uh, the volume. In this case, if we think of the disk, it is, um, you know, a whole disk, like a circle, would be pi r squared times my thickness in the z direction. But we just have a half of that. <clears throat> OK, so let's plug that in for density. So then um, integral of dm times y is 2 thirds. <clears throat> We put in our expression for rho, which is m, 1 half pi r squared times my thickness t. And then over here, I still have my r cubed that I have to bring down and my thickness t. So those t's are going to cancel out. The um, r squared reduces the r cubed just to r. And then we can flip that. <clears throat> 1 divided by 1 half is 2, so I end up getting 4 thirds m over pi. And then we have one r left out on the side. OK, so we're almost there. So the y center of mass is a triple integral right, of dm times my y position, and then triple integral of dm, which means I'm just adding up all my little ass ma mass elements. Um, and so this, we said before, right? it's just going to give me the mass. OK, so 4 thirds m over pi times r, and now I'm dividing by the mass. And so that's going to cancel out. And so the y center of mass of the, the disk is just 4 thirds, or 4 over 3 pi, times the radius of the disk. And that's it.